Welcome to episode 4 of How to Start a Business, the podcast that teaches you everything you need to know about launching your own venture. I'm your host, and in this episode, we're going to talk about how to fund your business. Funding your business is one of the most important and challenging steps in starting a business. It means finding and securing the money that you need to start and grow your business. It also means managing your finances and cash flow effectively and efficiently. But how do you fund your business? What are the different sources and methods of financing your business idea? How do you choose the best one for you? These are some of the questions that we're going to answer in this episode. We're going to look at how to Estimate your startup costs and ongoing expenses Explore the different types of funding options available for your business Evaluate the pros and cons of each funding option Prepare and present your pitch and proposal to potential funders Negotiate and secure the best deal for your business By the end of this episode, you should have a clear idea of how to fund your business and make sure it has enough money to survive and thrive So let's get started The first step in funding your business is to estimate your startup costs and ongoing expenses This means calculating how much money you need to start and run your business for a certain period of time. It also means creating a budget and a forecast for your income and expenses. To estimate your startup costs and ongoing expenses, you can use methods such as bottom-up approach, a method of estimating your costs by adding up all the individual expenses that you will incur to start and operate your business, such as equipment, inventory, rent, utilities, salaries, marketing, etc. Top-down approach, a method of estimating your costs by using industry averages or benchmarks to determine how much money you will need to start and operate your business, such as revenue per customer, cost per unit, profit margin, etc. Break-even analysis, a method of estimating your costs by finding out how much revenue you need to generate to cover your fixed and variable costs and reach a point where you make no profit or loss. You can also use tools such as Excel, Google Sheets, or QuickBooks to create and manage your budget and forecast. The goal is to find out How much money do you need to start your business? How much money do you need to run your business on a monthly or yearly basis? How long will it take for your business to break even or become profitable? Dash. The key is to be realistic and conservative in your estimates and to account for unexpected costs and risks. The second step in funding your business is to explore the different types of funding options available for your business. There are many sources and methods of financing your business idea, and each one has its own advantages and disadvantages. Some of the most common types of funding options are Bootstrapping, this means using your own savings, income, assets, or credit cards to fund your business. It is suitable for businesses that have low startup costs and can generate revenue quickly. The advantages of bootstrapping are that you have full control and ownership of your business and that you don't have to repay or share profits with anyone. The disadvantages are that you have limited resources and that you bear all the financial risk. Crowdfunding, this means raising money from a large number of people who support your business idea through online platforms such as Kickstarter, Indiegogo, or GoFundMe. It is suitable for businesses that have a unique or innovative product or service that can attract a lot of attention and interest. The advantages of crowdfunding are that you can raise a lot of money quickly and that you can validate your idea and build a community around it. The disadvantages are that you have to offer rewards or equity to your backers and that you have to deal with a lot of competition and regulations. Grants, this means receiving money from government agencies, foundations, or organizations that support your business idea based on certain criteria or objectives. It is suitable for businesses that have a social or environmental impact or that operate in specific sectors or regions. The advantages of grants are that you don't have to repay or give up equity and that you can benefit from the credibility and network of the grantor. The disadvantages are that grants are highly competitive and selective and that they come with strict requirements and conditions. Loans, this means borrowing money from banks, credit unions, or online lenders that you have to repay with interest over a period of time. It is suitable for businesses that have a proven track record or a strong business plan and that can generate enough cash flow to service the debt. 
The advantages of loans are that you can access a large amount of money and that you retain full ownership of your business. The disadvantages are that you have to pay interest and fees and that you have to provide collateral or personal guarantee. Angel investors, this means receiving money from wealthy individuals who invest in your business idea in exchange for equity or a share of ownership. It is suitable for businesses that have high growth potential and scalability and that can offer a high return on investment. The advantages of angel investors are that they can provide a lot of money and expertise and that they can open doors to other opportunities and connections. The disadvantages are that you have to give up some control and ownership of your business and that you have to deal with high expectations and pressure. Venture capitalists, this means receiving money from firms or funds that invest in your business idea in exchange for equity or a share of ownership. It is suitable for businesses that have a proven product or service, a large and growing market, and a strong competitive advantage. The advantages of venture capitalists are that they can provide a lot of money and resources, and that they can help you scale and exit your business. The disadvantages are that you have to give up a significant amount of control and ownership of your business, and that you have to align with their vision and goals. The key is to explore the different types of funding options available for your business and to understand their pros and cons. The third step in funding your business is to evaluate the pros and cons of each funding option. This means comparing and contrasting the different sources and methods of financing your business idea based on various criteria such as Amount, how much money can you raise from each funding option? Cost, how much money do you have to pay or give up for each funding option? Risk, how much financial risk do you have to bear for each funding option? Control, how much control or ownership do you have to relinquish for each funding option? Time, how long does it take to raise money from each funding option? Effort, how much effort do you have to put into raising money from each funding option? Fit, how well does each funding option fit your business idea, stage, goals, and values? You can also use tools such as a decision matrix or a SWOT analysis to evaluate the pros and cons of each funding option. The goal is to find out which funding option offers the most benefits and the least drawbacks for your business. Which funding option matches your needs and preferences the best? Which funding option is the most feasible and viable for your business? The key is to evaluate the pros and cons of each funding option objectively and rationally. The fourth step in funding your business is to prepare and present your pitch and proposal to potential funders. This means creating and delivering a compelling presentation or document that showcases your business idea, its value proposition, its market opportunity, its competitive edge, its financial projections, and its funding needs. It also means convincing potential funders that you are the right person or team to execute your business idea successfully. To prepare and present your pitch and proposal to potential funders, you can use methods such as Elevator pitch, a short and catchy summary of your business idea that you can deliver in 30 seconds or less to spark interest and curiosity from potential funders. Pitch deck, a visual and concise presentation that highlights the main points of a project to potential investors or clients. It is used to persuade them and convince them to invest in or support the project. The deck should include all necessary information about the idea, team, and potential opportunities for growth. I hope this episode is as interesting as it is useful to you. I'm still Debbie. See you in episode 5.